Hi everyone, this is Ramanuj Mukherjee today again, and I'm going to talk about. Uh, I am with. Uh, I have a very special guest. I I have with me right now Chinmay Bhosale, uh, Doctor Chinmay Bhosale, in fact, and uh, uh, he is a, a criminal lawyer, and he has been doing very well in his practice. And today he is going to tell us about what is it really like to pursue your career in criminal law. there are a lot of you and i think at some level every lawyer's dream is to defend uh, uh, a person who is accused of a crime but has not really committed it and uh, <laughs> you know save the day and uh, chinmay you are doing this in real life so for for me at least like every criminal lawyer is a hero at some level so uh, thank you for joining us very welcome to an hour tell us chinmay like why don't you introduce yourself a little in in a, in a little bit more details tell us about your background and so i have been uh, i have passed out from ilis law college in 2010 and uh, since then i have been practicing uh, criminal litigation to give a brief background of myself is that it's not just after passing out i have uh, started working in this uh, field in fact right from third year onwards i have been pretty specific that i have been working with uh, senior advocates who specialize in criminal law the reason probably would have been uh, the fact that i had tried uh, my shot at uh, say civil litigation uh, interning with civil lawyers senior lawyers who did only civil litigation but but that really didn't uh, catch my fancy and that eventually uh, led to my uh, inkling towards criminal law probably that also has got to do with uh, the fact that i come from a background which has uh, a lot of uh, lawyers and uh, every sort of person associated with law my dad himself is a very uh, senior and known uh, criminal lawyer in maharashtra so that's how i uh, started with criminal litigation though obviously i didn't join our offices at the first go i did work uh, with other people at their offices for around roughly 5 years three as an intern and two as a associate and thereafter i started uh, practicing criminal law in my office so uh, how do you uh, what do you do as a criminal lawyer what does the day of a criminal lawyer really look like so basically uh, i am a defense advocate there are two types of criminal uh, people who could be practicing criminal law in uh, india essentially and specifically criminal uh, litigation is instituted by the state and in all the cognizable cases however there is also provision of uh, having private complaints being filed in the court if the fir's are not filed by the police that comes under section 1563 but let's not get into the details of it so essentially my day begins with defending the people my clients the people i am representing and that's how it ends pra pra practically uh, so what do you do in a day like so i understand you represent your clients but what does it entail like do you spend time like just just asking like because many of us would yes, so need to be a criminal lawyer may want to know do you spend a lot of time researching drafting of course yes. during court hours you must be in the court how does it work really? frankly speaking the level of urgency which is required in uh, criminal practice is uh, absolutely high therefore uh, the moot court approach that i would like to call it uh, doesn't really work in uh, criminal practice usually what is uh, thought about by people of uh, with respect to criminal uh, litigation or work is that once you get the case you start uh, researching on it and you start uh, studying in it and then you come up with some defense or some conclusion but that really doesn't work in criminal practice because uh, here the level of urgency for example a person who is arrested will give me a call that i have to represent him in few hours probably at max 24 hours so there is not enough time for you to really start researching on a topic and then gain the expertise so what is required in criminal law is that irrespective of your work uh, before the court and with the clients you continuously keep on have to update yourself with the latest case laws latest amendments and the exact and the minutest nuances of the law which are required with with respect to the defenses that you can take in a criminal trial those uh, case laws should be by heart 
practically otherwise uh, it doesn't really work all right so uh, basically you all are uh, you spend a lot of time in the code so how many hours do you work in a day basically uh, the day starts around nine, around 9 o'clock the office hours start around 9 am and uh, they go on till about roughly 8 o'clock so 11 hours a day uh, but maybe that's uh, relative because at times you do have to spend time going back home and reading your briefs or uh, whatever pending work is there okay so okay so basically you you get back and you you start reading your briefs and if 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 the need be yes yeah so you said that you have to constantly keep yourself updated with the latest case laws amendments how do you really do that uh, frankly speaking uh, i have a habit of uh, continuing right since my uh, days of internship as i told you right uh, for 3 years before i passed out i did uh, continuously intern with a senior advocate on the criminal side so right from those days i have uh, had a habit to maintain a diary in which i keep on writing in my own handwriting even today in the world of digital uh, age uh, the important case laws that i have felt were uh, necessary on various uh, angles of a criminal trial so that's the habit that i have been developing and over the period of years around last 10 odd years uh going through all the weeklies the dailies and the monthly uh, reporters you do develop a database of case laws uh, in your head that you know that can be used at any given point of time and you don't really need to spend hours just to get to know certain angle of the trial to defend your client so uh when you started criminal law practice we hear that you know initial years are very difficult you don't tend to earn much it's very difficult to even pay your rent uh, we we frequently hear these things so tell us about uh, this part of uh, criminal law practice so when you begin yes. you understand that once you succeed you the sky is the limit as to how much you earn and your power and fame and everything but the initial years are they very hard absolutely litigation per se not just criminal litigation litigation per se is very hard for a person who is starting out irrespective of the fact whether he has a background or not and if he doesn't have it specifically it is all the more tough for people to go in for uh, litigation all the more i would say it is tougher for people who want to go into criminal litigation because uh, at the end of the day irrespective of how good you are no one is going to trust a person with no expertise or background uh, with his life since when it comes about bails or criminal trials it's a life and death and a question of liberty so uh, it's quite tough for the people in initial years to get clientele and get paid and get some decent amount of work <clears throat> so probably the only solution for it is just hang it uh, out there and just uh, try to observe as many cases try to assist as many people on their cases and uh, keep learning in the in the in the process so that you don't really develop a rust probably on your brains since you won't be working on any uh, active case of yours as such so that's the key you just keep on uh, working with others if not your own cases and just keep on polishing your uh, skills of criminal law so you told us that you know you uh, got started like uh, in in early times in your college uh, by interning Uh, with criminal lawyers for three good years. So tell us more about that. How did you get started? What yes. were initial steps like? And if uh, we'll come to the question later that you know, if somebody wants to be a criminal lawyer and let's yes. say still in law law school, how could they get started? Like that's the second question. First, we want to know about uh, your experience. Yes. So my experience with criminal law basically started because of my dislike with civil law. so in the second year of my law school i uh, did work with a very senior advocate on the civil side uh, for quite uh, almost the entire year of my second year and uh, that was the time when i convincingly thought that uh, civil law is not of my inkling that's why immediately from third year onwards i started working with uh, designate senior advocate mr ashok mundarki who uh, who's a giant at the bar of criminal law at uh, bombay so initial uh, days of work obviously uh, being an intern you don't really understand what's happening 
and there's not much time with every anyone to uh, sit with an intern and uh, really make him understand stuff so that is the time when you just uh, try to observe as much as possible i remember i was i used to be really happy even if i used to get to carry the brief the client's brief to the office or to the chamber of my uh, senior or to the conference room or to various meetings just because holding those briefs you would be uh, privy to the meeting and you get to learn and you get to hear things which obviously help in your experience so those were my initial years and uh, as much as i could see i could hear and i could uh, experience uh, it kept on building on to my liking to criminal law and uh, that's how i kept on continuing with him till final year i i continued in the same office uh, whenever i interned uh, and uh, from third year to fifth year and that really sealed my uh, decision of continuing with uh, criminal litigation so uh, from the time when you were just glad to hold the brief now we know you are a successful lawyer of course success is there is again there is always more to go but uh, would you like to share i mean you would like to hear actually not even if you wouldn't like to share we would like to hear about some of your best moments in the practice so far uh i would uh, really not like to uh, uh distinguish the best moments with respect to what a person would uh, ideally consider after he has considerable practice that is getting your names in the newspapers or getting fancy fees or uh, all those things but as i said those uh, years of work uh, working in uh, bombay three years i worked with mr ashok mundargi and two years with mr satish manishinde those were the years which i really cherished because that was the time when i really got into the groove of criminal litigation and uh, both these uh, seniors of mine they were of tremendous help and encouragement and uh, being sources of uh, huge amount of uh, knowledge of law specifically criminal law that was the time when it actually inspired me into being a person who would like to continue with this particular line of tra- track for life so after that whatever i gained there that was the source or that was the point from which i really uh, started delivering once i started with my own practice and that got me all whatever i got the clients the money and everything so i think the peak point would be those uh, five years that i spent working for them with them uh, which really molded me as a person right from uh, teaching me how to deal with clients how to talk to them how to maintain relations how to uh, research how to go about a case so these are the things you won't uh, really uh, see or read or pra- or any no law books or no exams are going to teach you all these things it is only when you interact and be in the surroundings of such people that you uh, inculcate all these things and i think that was the high point and uh, highlight of uh, the 10 years that i have been into this uh, field so i totally understand when you say that the learning was the best part in all this but after the learning what was the reward like can you share that with our uh, audience the reward uh, reward has been uh, numerous uh, news articles reward has been uh, numerous acquittals reward has been numerous uh, people that i have got out on bail in uh, various cases uh, if you go on to see the big names that uh, probably that's what uh, you are trying to ask me here is that i have worked with in uh, many cases which have been of uh, media interest you could see when i was in bombay i have worked sufficiently on adarsh i have worked sufficiently on the hawala case of hasan ali i have uh, worked on various medical legal cases uh, which probably i wouldn't know uh, if everyone's uh, aware of which have been uh, reported uh, pretty uh, consistently in the media back then and also frankly speaking it, it's not just about the high court uh, life it's also about the trial life that a criminal lawyer faces which is quite interesting and rewarding so with respect to trials i have uh, conducted quite a few uh, trials for politicians which have been in newspapers i would not like to take uh, the names here for the sake of uh, protecting their identity as such but uh, yes uh, for a criminal lawyer the intensity of the case and the name of the case which gets highlighted across the media is the high point of his life frankly speaking 
one specific case that i would like to mention which i think was the high point of my delivery of uh, criminal law as well as the publicity that it got was the uh, there was a firing police firing which happened on the expressway pune mumbai Exp expressway there were certain people who uh, were agitating on the expressway which led to police firing and uh, certain people got uh, unfortunately uh, passed away in the firing as well as certain were injured so there was a inquiry commission which was uh, instituted uh, by the uh, assembly of maharashtra under the uh, leadership of a retired high court judge mr gaikwad justice gaikwad so that commission i undertook that entire commission and it was a very very uh, tiring as well as enriching experience and that would have been the probably the high, high point of my career uh, with respect to my practice is what i'll think what was so enriching about that experience can you tell us more about that uh, yes so uh, anyone who's from maharashtra probably he must have read it uh, in the newspapers with respect to this incident so in august 2013 i don't really uh, pardon me if i am wrong with the dates so uh, around that time there was a agitation by farmers uh, in pune district on the pune mumbai expressway which everyone knows is a is is the first expressway in the country which is chock a block with vehicles and uh, there are no pedestrians and two wheeler two wheelers are allowed, allowed on this uh, particular expressway so on this particular day uh, back then certain protesters amounting to around 2 to 3000 they had barged onto the expressway and there was heavy stone pelting uh, which was happening on the expressway wherein around roughly 3 to 4000 uh, cars were stuck in that uh, ruckus so thanks to this the police had to be called obviously uh, rapid action force was there as well as the rural police was there and uh, that particular uh, incident eventually broke out into setting out uh, the police vans on fire and uh, the stone pelting leading to the police officers getting unconscious because it was absolutely dreadful and uh, serious in retaliation when there was a police fire or police action which was taken there were certain casualties from the protesting people and that led to a big political uh, drama in the state of maharashtra so handling that case when uh, the entire uh, political scenario in the state was revolving around it there were assembly questions in the state assembly being asked on it every day uh, there were um, more media people than lawyers in the in the court hall where the inquiry commission was being undertaken and uh, as i said there were thousands of protesters so all of them used to gather during the hearings and that was quite a scene of pressure probably for the person who's try trying to uh, carry that the advocates that were trying to carry out that commission so in spite of uh, all the media uh, coverage in spite of all the pressures and uh, the eyeballs which were there on the case having to go through that voluminous case because i remember we had uh, contested uh, more than 100 odd uh, witnesses in that particular case and uh, that's just uh, prosecution witnesses we also had uh, close to 3 dozen uh, defense witnesses so more than 150 witnesses in a is a very very lengthy trial and to uh, keep your defense quite fit with respect to uh, getting the necessary answers in the cross examinations from 150 odd uh, witnesses was a very very challenging uh, thing for me and that's why i think that was one of the highlights of my career probably the biggest highlight of my career uh yeah so, so i think i lost you for a moment can you uh, repeat the last thing you said uh i said that uh, having uh, getting to successfully get your defense with the defense that you have thought for the criminal trial getting to successfully drive the defense through 150 odd uh, witnesses that you try to uh, that you do try uh, and examine in the court is quite a exercise for a criminal lawyer someone who has practiced in criminal law would know that uh, getting the defense out of uh, even handful of witnesses for that matter even half a dozen witnesses is a tough job because you never know what uh, question could go wrong and what answer you are trying to get out of the person so trying to stick to it and successfully getting out it out of 150 people 
was a big task for us and success uh, eventually the in the commission we were representing the police officials who had uh, taken the action against the protesters and eventually we did successfully defend them and the report of the inquiry commission was accepted in the assembly okay so uh, tell us a little about uh, you know uh, what are the most difficult times for a criminal lawyer uh, i would like to uh, split this answer in two parts probably the most difficult uh, part for a criminal lawyer is the earliest early stage of his career when no one is going to trust with his with the with his liberty uh, to a person uh, who's not got in, enough credentials or experience irrespective of how much knowledge uh, he has or how much potential he has so probably those are the toughest periods because uh, irrespective of what you say no one does no one uh, really trusts your uh, words no one really trusts your uh, advice or the consultation that you give so that's the biggest hindrance and the toughest part of a criminal lawyer's life later on probably the toughest part is the fact that as i said there is a huge amount of urgency which is involved in uh, criminal practice as well as that urgency is clubbed with the fact that depending upon what you argue and depending upon your expertise the liberty of a person is going to be decided by the court so that is one of the biggest challenge that you keep on facing for your life the till till the time you continue with criminal litigation that's one challenge that you keep on facing because uh, probably in other types of litigation you do get uh, a chance say to set aside your order or to revise your order or to go back on your uh, arguments or have parallel remedies to your uh, situation but in criminal litigation the situation is such that it's just one shot that you have got and on that probably it's going to be decided whether a person is going to get the bail or is going to get arrest uh, is going to go behind the bars so that level of urgency as well as the stakes that are uh, involved that's the toughest part to handle uh, mentally as well for life okay uh, so we hear from a lot of lawyers that they practice civil law and criminal law at the same time and uh, i have like there have been others who have been on an hour with law school and who say it's a better idea to when you when you start your practice just to focus on criminal better than just focusing on criminal law you should probably do both at the same time what's your thought on what's the positives and negatives the positives from it is that uh, as a lawyer you develop all round uh, knowledge of law you don't really stick to one specialization and you do practice uh, all fields so that helps you gain uh, some knowledge or probably a great amount of knowledge into all fields of law also on the uh, also it, the other plus point of it is that you keep on getting steady flow of click cases whatever it might be few might be civil some might be rent matters some might be criminal matters negotiable instruments so if you do all around practice it keeps you or it helps you uh, having a sufficient flow of cases so that helps you with uh, your appearances your uh, rents your income and everything on the hind side the negatives of it i feel is that uh, it doesn't really help you uh, get the expertise or that edge over others with respect to the knowledge that you gain if you uh, practice in a specific or a specialized field so as i said uh, specifically in criminal law since uh, i would like to stick to my uh, command over it it helps if you day in day out you just work in criminal law and you develop yourself in criminal law because in a criminal trial there are numerous uh, nuances that you have to take care with respect to a trial so if your uh, angles are sorted out you don't really have to think twice before uh, taking a cross examination of a certain uh, witness depending upon the facts of the case uh, i'll just try to give you an example just to give you a clear picture of this so say for example in a crime a particular uh, vehicle is used is the allegation made in the charge sheet so there's a case law of the honorable bombay high court uh, which has relied on a judgment of the supreme court of india which states that unless and until there is the the tire marks of the particular vehicle are also taken by the investigating authorities from the scene of offense that recovery of vehicle is not really material for proving uh, it against the accused in the case so this is a very small nuance even if the vehicle is uh,
taken by the police from from the behest of the accused if this small nuance is not fulfilled it really helps the accused in his defense and uh, if you know such things such minute and detailed things it really helps you in going with the flow of the case so that's 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 the biggest thing that i feel uh, which helps in which helps you in getting the expertise if you do just one line of uh, practice be it civil or criminal so if you stick with one line it really helps you probably the initial years will be difficult but once you are up to a certain level and once you start getting steady flow of cases that really helps you to make the jump so uh, what's your take like uh, several people have been asking us this question on live chat and also people have messaged me to ask you this question how much do criminal lawyers are if you can give us an idea as to at different levels of success what would a criminal lawyer be earning criminal lawyers would be earning on the capacity of the client frankly speaking because as i said uh, see I, again i'll split the answer uh, into two uh, criminal uh, law practice obviously it will depend uh, in two parts one is protecting the liberty so it essentially deals with the bails anticipatory bails and uh, the related uh, practice which is around criminal law and the second part is the trials which you have to undertake in criminal law as well as the uh, discharge applications or the revisions that you file so both will have varied pays but uh, frankly speaking uh, the pays are quite high in comparison since the liberty of the individual is uh, is at stake so even if it is a person who's from a middle class background he's going to pay you if you are good obviously quite a few lakhs for the case uh, just because uh, his liberty is going to be protected by you and obviously as i said uh, the bigger the client the bigger the pay because uh, the the successful and the bigger people know that their liberty when their liberty is at stake what is at stake so they are ready to pay the pay whatever it takes to get the best lawyer to defend them and protect their liberty i don't know if this is sufficing your answer or you know you want the exact uh, figures of it but uh, then that's quite quite uh, relatable and quite differential actually yeah it will be very different for for different lawyers but let's yeah. say like you know uh, from the perspective of uh, you know a young lawyer or a law student who's trying to decide okay yes. so obviously people will have different levels of success and reputation uh, yes in the different levels of fees of course but if yes. you can give us some idea like if somebody is practicing in uh, mumbai or say delhi uh, or maybe compared to that somebody is practicing in a uh, in a smaller city okay maybe in nagpur or maybe somebody who is practicing in uh, a different maybe patna or in a different places yes as a criminal lawyer probably you would have some idea as to what lawyers at different standing do on and we are not asking about your salary or your mm -hmm. earnings we are uh, here what we are trying to figure out is that you know what could people because you know every in india we have such a culture very few people actually work for their uh, passion and if if you the the real choice before uh, law law students today that i see is that when they say that you know uh, tell their parents that you know uh, thank you for this great education and paying all the big fees to the law school <laughs> now i want to study criminal uh, sorry i want to practice criminal law they will be like oh okay but can't you like get a law firm job that's what we thought you will be getting or you know is it not possible for you to become a judge then uh, yeah. why do you it's, it's a tough life are you sure and i think there is a huge lack of real information about how much like i think people know how much a corporate lawyer earns if some you do mna law how much do you earn if you are in a second tier firm how much do you earn uh, somehow for criminal lawyers this information we of course hear like some crazy stories in the newspaper which is shock value basically you know clean yes. bait asking that who are the highest earning lawyers in india and all of that but beyond that realistically speaking yes. if let's say i am today uh, i'm i'm ready to put in that 10 years of hard work or five yes. years of and i'm ready to invest like five years in college and then another five years what would yes. you say like is it when well, if you could give me some idea from that perspective 
see if we uh, speak about a person who has put in around 5 to 10 years of his uh, life in g- gaining the expertise and knowledge of criminal law i would definitely say that the monetary angle of it is very satisfying because uh, if you if i uh, try to give you number say a city like uh, financially well placed cities like say bombay in maharashtra say bombay or pune or in uh, other states like uh, bangalore Uh, definitely you would be earning at least in the range of couple of lakhs at least a month if you are uh, having decent amount of practice that that again i am trying to gauge from the fact that you are not really from a law background because uh, a person who is from a law background and does have a, a, around 10 years of experience and expertise in the specific uh, field from which from which he has the background then the earnings will definitely uh, be somewhere around 5 to 10 lakh a month also because uh, that much uh, you can easily gain out of a criminal practice since as i said liberty is at stake so the pays are higher yeah i mean i mean that's very helpful and how about you know in a little smaller cities like say jaipur or nagpur or you know cities where of course even uh this let's say tier 2 cities in india what could it be like uh a good good uh, sufficient amount of practice of criminal law right be it from uh, negotiable instruments till some session session trials to some high court appeals everything would definitely earn you at least a lakh or two at least a lakh i would say if not two even in tier 2 uh, cities like uh, the ones they have you have mentioned because as i said uh, when you compare the litigation part of the work forget the fancy corporate work of mnas and uh, multi billion dollar deals but if you come down to litigation and you even exclude the supreme court where the stakes again are super high uh, in criminal practice comparatively since what is at stake is higher the pays are higher even if you com- consider the tier 2 cities so in tier 2 cities if you get uh, say 2000 for certain uh, mundane civil work probably for a for the criminal work of same stature you would at least get paid around twice the amount so you earn decent uh, money once you start getting the steady flow of cases but as i had mentioned earlier the only hitch here is that in criminal law there's there's really not the option of being substandard and expecting that the people will uh, trust you with their liberty and their life so that's the only catch in criminal practice in civil as i said or in other uh, litigations with no uh, disrespect to them in fact i am not really a, since i am not even an expert at them i am quite uh, incapable to speak on it as well but nonetheless as i said uh, in other fields of uh, practice since the stakes aren't as high or as uh, aren't as immediate probably the level of pay differs and uh, that helps the criminal lawyers who have uh, tried to slog it out for the initial 5 10 years to keep earning decent amount of money uh, after that great so uh, yeah, till tell me something have you ever while, while you were studying in uh, law school you told us that you con- you explored civil litigation but didn't find find it interesting how about have you never thought of working in a law firm because it's quite common these days that people want to work in corporate law firms or want to be in house counsels have it ever occurred to you uh, not really i have uh, never ever even interned in a law firm i have always wanted to litigate right from the time i have entered the law school uh, probably the reason for it is that uh, i come from a book leaving me aside i come from a very illustrious uh, legal background so and everyone from my family the people who have been involved with uh, law and the legal field have been litigators and very successful ones uh, right from my father to my extended family a lot of them are into law and they have uh, achieved great successes my father's been the chairman of the bar council of maharashtra and goa my one of my uncles has also been the chairman of maharashtra and goa he uh, bar association uh, sorry bar council is also been the vice chairman of uh, bar council of india we have judges we have uh, law ministers we have senior advocates everyone in who, who's come out from our family so all of them were litigators and uh, probably that had a constant influence on my mind right from childhood 
and uh, probably that was the reason for me ne to never think into uh, corporate work as such because as i said there were two things uh, one was this uh, uh, constant uh, environment that i had grew up in of litigation and the second thing was that i knew since i have seen all these people is that uh, even i have seen days when my uh, dad was a very junior lawyer when i was very young and the days were very different be it financially or socially and i had seen the days when he was uh, one of the biggest names in the state both socially and financially how things changed and uh, the fact that the sky is the limit so i have always known those facts and that's why uh, corporate practice never really uh, caught my fancy for that matter firm uh, corporate law firm practice didn't really catch my fancy tell us a little about corporate criminal litigation we hear a lot of people uh, students and others uh, keep saying that i want to get into i'm interested in corporate criminal litigation yes so how is it in india and how does it work and yes so corporate criminal litigation basically is something which uh, we would uh, in uh, normal language we would call uh, white collar crimes so as a matter of fact i do head our offices with respect to the white collar crimes so essentially these are the crimes which uh, get registered or uh, are alleged during business transactions majoritily say for example uh, a builder has some jv with another builder or a land uh, owner and uh, there are certain uh, mismatch of funds probably the utilization of funds or the declaration of funds and that leads to cases of cheating that leads to cases of forgery so those are the cases wherein uh, the hardcore criminals or the bodily injuries or the bodily crimes that have been mentioned in the ipc are not involved but nonetheless it falls under uh, criminal litigation and uh, the people involved being two corporate bodies or two uh, registered institutions uh, that's what essentially would uh, primarily get uh, qualified as corporate criminal litigation in fancy terms but eventually it's criminal litigation so would you say that if you are uh, doing criminal litigation eventually you end up doing corporate criminal litigation or white collar crimes anyway so you should focus yes, on absolutely, absolutely. the only thing frankly speaking what differentiates a person from actually having a decent clientele of white collar crimes is the uh, present the way in which he can uh, present himself uh, right from the bars uh, the bar associations that he appears in that is the courts to the offices because many times what happens is that uh, as you very well know that uh, in corporate world even in corporate legal world presentation of your knowledge as well as of the case and representation of the client do have a great standing and that is one thing which lacks in litigation specifically in trial courts that is one thing which uh, lacks tremendously even if the people have the knowledge probably they might have even more knowledge but the way they present their case the way they use their words the way they conduct the entire matter both with the clients and in the court that really decides Uh, whether the corporations large corporations are going to stick with that lawyer or not because the level of service that is offered to them is very negligible uh, which sadly is the case in entire litigation fraternity uh, and that is the place where if you can uh, stand out and you can match to the corporate firms then definitely the corporate criminal uh, practice that you are mentioning that will definitely stay with you and you you are bound to do it on a regular basis as part of your criminal litigation great so uh, chinmay we are going to take a few questions uh, from our uh, re, uh, from our viewers sure uh, akanksha agarwal is asking sir what do you recommend should should i intern should an intern fresher start internship under a district lawyer or appellate or senior lawyer i think she is asking about if somebody wants to do criminal law yes what should they be doing uh i think this is the it's a very apt question to begin with uh, with respect to talking about criminal litigation uh, it is very essential that uh, the start of your experience starts with knowing uh, and working around criminal trials because irrespective of whether or not you respect trial courts and uh, whether or not you are very fancied by the supreme courts and the high courts if you want to be a criminal litigating uh, lawyer 
you need to know the nuances of the trials because uh, that's the where uh, everything originates so i would suggest that you definitely do work at least for a couple of years of your life uh, in trial courts if you want to do criminal litigation because this that that experience will help you even while dealing the appeals that you will be facing in the high court or the revisions or uh, all the associated uh, appellate work if you know the nuances of the trial you will definitely defend your client in a better way in the appellate uh, courts okay uh am i so basically also wanted to ask you you have done a phd yes correct and why is that is it just is, is it anything is it any way strategically connected with the criminal law career or is this is this just something that you personally uh actually both i have always wanted to do the phd uh, in law it has uh, multiple uh, reasons one was my interest uh, towards uh, having some niche in with respect to knowledge of academic world as well that i don't know how does it come probably that also comes from the family because uh, we have another uh, stream of people who are into uh, legal academia as well but uh, nonetheless that was uh, part of the reason second reason for me was uh, the fact that the topic of my phd is something which is related to what i've observed through the last 8 10 years of my practice and that's uh, the fact that one uh, in, uh, that's the fact that there's the lack of uh, malicious prosecution laws is one of the biggest hindrances uh, in our uh, legal system because uh, for example uh, you have a criminal trial and as you say uh, as you said while opening this session that uh, it a person who saves a uh, uh, the lawyer who pay, uh, say saves a person from a false case uh, ends up being a hero but in india sadly you can only get a acquittal order for that person and uh, that person doesn't really have any legal recourse uh against the false case that has been filed against him and that i have seen in main, many trials in uh, to the extent that i have had cases which i have defended in which the judges have said that the concerned uh, criminal cases were lost only to malign that person but even then i couldn't really do anything to my for my client beyond getting him the acquittal so that was the point or those were the instances which really uh, nudged me into getting into this uh, topic of malicious prosecution which i ended up doing my uh, doctorate on and also uh, it helps it helps you get getting some standing both in the bar as well as with your clients uh, as i said uh, for a younger lawyer specifically in the criminal field uh, as much expertise and as ma- as many feathers in the cap uh, as that much uh, respect probably you will get or that much uh, seriousness will be attached to what you are saying so all these things in uh, parts eventually played the role in me getting the or me trying to get my phd and eventually completing it that's great so tell us a little more about this what did you find you were saying that in india we cannot do anything if somebody files a false case against me and it is proven i cannot yes. uh, do a malicious prosecution uh maybe civil case later on against that person there is nothing that we that can be done is that how it is yes so essentially in india what happens is uh there are certain provisions say section 211 of the indian penal code uh, or section 191 which do allow uh, certain remedies for uh, false evidences or uh, false cases but essentially these sections are uh, limited to the extent of the magistrates or the trial courts before which the certain uh, criminal case is going on so for example if uh, a false evidence uh, or a false case is brought before a trial court and if the court feels that this is a false case eventually after leading the initial evidence or the arguments uh, the power of instituting a, a case against the complainant of a false case rests exclusively with the court as of today uh, as as of the sections which are uh, prevalent right now with the indian penal code and the code of uh, criminal procedure the exclusive power rests with the court but the victim the actual victim who has to go through the trauma of getting a bail getting arrested for defending himself through the criminal trial and going through the social uh, stigma of it he doesn't have any legal remedy as of today in india to charge the person who has uh, filed the false case against him so that is the situation that's the reality in india there's no law 
which uh, helps you with it the that's the basic reason of introducing studying and trying to uh, draft certain policies which might be useful in implementation of the law in india <clears throat> for that matter there have been certain laws i'll uh, continue with this uh, for for that matter there are certain uh, new laws which are coming up with provisions for it for example the uh, act which has come for prevention of uh, sexual abuse of children pocso act so that specifically has a section which states that if any person makes a false complaint under that particular act he will be criminally liable for uh, a life uh, for a sentence in the prison as well as fine so the legislature the judiciary and everyone they are trying to keep up with this trend of false cases and trying to come up with solutions but there's no exclusive act or there's no exclusive uh, law which has been recognized in india as yet for uh, false cases and false litigations that reminds me even the sexual harassment act has a problem Absolutely. yes yes yeah. correct correct so uh, but even if there is no specific law can we not file a civil case under tort uh, again law of tort is not uh, in a readily implementable uh, phase or uh, space in india so certain uh, tortious uh, claims or cert certain tortious laws have been uh inculcated in the legal system by way of separate uh, acts in itself say consumer protection that's also a tort so way back it was converted into a mainstream streamlined litigation uh, legislation and that's how you can implement it but otherwise beyond that you can't do anything of course there is a law of civil and criminal defamation but defamation as you know is entirely different from uh, the situation that we are talking yeah all right so uh, we'll take the next question neha roy is asking what traits a law student should have to pursue career as a successful criminal lawyer <laughs> uh patience would be the first thing that you will be requiring uh knowing that you're not going to get any serious work for quite a few years is a very depressing fact and still keeping your patience and going at it every day day in day out is the first thing that you will require second thing i would suggest is the fact that it is very necessary to have a decently good amount of good quality and amount of memory because as i said uh, to be a successful criminal uh, advocate you need to deliver at a rapid pace you cannot be sluggish in your work you cannot delay the delivery so if you are not good at learning uh, humongous volumes of work and remembering them as easily it's quite difficult for you to become a good uh, criminal uh, litigator beyond that personally speaking uh, there's a, a certain, there's one very personal angle that is your your conscience there, there there have been many people who have been asking me don't you feel uh, uh, weird while uh, defending people who have been accused of various heinous crimes and all those things but uh, that's one thing that you need to steer away from you're not there to gauge anyone's character or anything you're you're just doing your job and interpreting the law and trying to defend the case of your client as well as you can so if you as a person can do have uh, can do that and have the capacity to deal with it very objectively and not get into the morals and not get into the uh, emotional angle of it then probably you are a fit person for litigation if not then it's quite difficult to go ahead with litigation of criminal law for life wait uh mohan chandran is asking will knowledge of psychology be a big help for criminal lawyers uh at least indian uh, practice of criminal law hasn't reached that stage wherein you will have to also play the part of investigation as the as is the case in certain developed countries like say america for example criminal lawyers do also have to play a part in the investigation of the matter they do hire private detectives they do try to get into the skin of the game but that is not the situation as of today in india because the entire investigation uh, is done by the investigating authorities that is the state and uh, the only role that you have to play is after the charge sheet is filed and you interpret the charge sheet with respect to the law in place and the case laws which have been laid down and try to put forth your case so psychology doesn't really play that big a role in the criminal litigation as of today in india so i wouldn't say that it is necessary but frankly speaking i myself have done a certain allied uh, 
things which did help me at certain points one was uh, having decent amount of uh, knowledge of criminal uh, sorry medical jurisprudence and having decent knowledge of uh, handwriting analysis so at certain stages it did help me in few cases but psychology has never really been uh, one of the requirements it's very interesting that you mentioned about private detectives uh not being hired in india but we have heard like we have read in the newspaper and stuff in the media about lawyers hiring private detectives there is a case going on in maharashtra also i think yes regarding some you know scholar details and kind of stuff but is it is it a good practice is it a defendable practice for or should lawyers really not hire or hire uh, private detectives as i said uh, the role of anyone beyond the investigating agency that is the police is very limited in criminal trial as of today in the prevalent laws of india so it's not the case that uh, you but but chinmay if you do have bring in some evidence that your private detective has found yes points out to something contrary to what police has found that would help right see uh, in a criminal litigation i'll just point out the basic fact it's not that you have to prove anything uh, like for example if x is alleged against you it's not that you have to prove y you just have to disprove x that's the limited amount of work that you have to do which in order to get the acquittal so there there are very few instances even in that i can think of wherein a private detective could come into picture because uh, as i said even if you do get in some evidence in criminal law going to the point of having defense at uh, defense witnesses and getting on record uh, material from defense witnesses is also limited but that also suffices so getting a person beyond that in a role of a detective is not really uh, necessary or at many stages it can't even be done because uh, as i said investigation is done of uh, x or of the allegation which has been made against you and you just need to disprove that investigation and the allegation it's not that you have to prove something else no absolutely while i appreciate that i like there are sometimes you know uh, when the for example i know about one or two cases where it so happened that uh, be- because of certain kind of political or maybe different business kind of uh, you know conspiracy sometimes people are framed and evidence is manufactured against them yes you know there is like it looks like on on the facts of like, by looking at on the face of things made it may look like there is sufficient evidence against a person yes uh, i have known like you know in those cases i have known like at least uh, see reporters who have gone and unearth evidence and done things because obviously reporters are investigative journalists and all yes But, uh, i mean i know it's not the norm in india really but we uh, i i i agree to your point to a uh, to a certain extent but uh, i think that role at uh, many a times uh, for a trial lawyer specifically or for a trial uh, criminal advocate that role has to be done by himself uh, i'll try to give you an example for example if uh, uh, as you said uh, false and fabricated evidence is created or false and fabricated allegations are made uh, you have to investigate into it yourself i agree to it but uh, as i said i'll uh, i have done it myself so i'll give you an example that for example it is said that uh, my client has has uh, tried attempted or has murdered uh, two people in certain location which i think is very hilly or i think which is which is at a place where uh, there won't be sufficient light and the allegation is that it is in the it is done in at certain time of the evening so it the investigating part of it will be on to myself because i'll have to physically go and check the place which has been mentioned by the police i'll have to physically go and check if the crime of offense which have been uh, the scene of offense which has been mentioned if enacted can it actually go by the way it has been alleged by the prosecution so that level of investigation has to be done at times but if that is done by the lawyer himself that's what it helps him while conducting the trial otherwise if some another person doing it is not going to help him because uh, 
for two things he has doesn't have the personal experience of it one and the person who is investigating it isn't as uh, as big an expert of the criminal law as the lawyer so he wouldn't know what all things he should consider while actually observing the scene of offense or what all factors he should uh, try and gauge and investigate very interesting so but we we do hear uh, of lawyers hiring private investigators especially in matrimonial cases i think it's yes, yes yes to that extent yes because then you have to, uh, that's uh, that I, as a uh, that's not a state case so why i was trying to tell you in criminal law it's not uh, as material because in criminal law it's a state case irrespective of what uh, the case is uh, every criminal law case is a state case unless it's a privately filed 1563 matter so there the state does its job and they file the charge sheet and you just have to defend it in matrimonial cases i understand there is no state involved so every party has to give their own evidence and for that they have their own detectives or whatever sources that they have to prove the evidence that they have yeah i've heard of union in, in labor uh, law cases yes 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 other other so other uh, sources of litigation do require yourself to gather sufficient evidence but in criminal law as i said uh, it's done by the investigating authorities that are being paid by the state right got it so uh let's take a few more questions yes quickly uh anant budhira budhraja is asking sir how does a criminal lawyer come to rescue in the pathetic condition of rape cases in india as it has been common place and death penalty is no deterrent okay <laughs> this is that again i as i uh, partly i had addressed uh, in in one question that you had asked what are the requirements of a criminal lawyer i had said you have to leave aside the conscience and all those moral uh, things because rape i understand even myself uh, as a principal i don't really take up cases which are uh, related directly or uh, indirectly to rape charges that's my moral decision or that's my personal choice but as a criminal lawyer if you have too many moral choices that you are making then your practice doesn't really uh, there's very little scope for you to do something because most of the criminal uh, litigations are for uh, bodily injuries and bodily crimes so that's one aspect which is very personal in nature i have also seen cases wherein allegations of rape are made just because uh, the women had to extort money just because uh, the person wasn't marrying them just because they were they wanted certain piece of the property so there have been certain cases of which have raised questions of or allegations of rape but they weren't proved accordingly but i do agree that in serious cases say nirbhaya case or uh, according cases it becomes a question of morals eventually and a personal choice so i don't think so i wouldn't comment that uh, the community at large should come together and not defend anyone because i know of false cases which have arisen of rape cases so i do not think uh, that the job of a lawyer is to stop defending certain kind of exactly. crimes exactly because you know uh, even if even if i think the most important like some people demand that you know uh, if if somebody has been accused of rape and we are reasonably sure kill him hang him like don't have trial i mean that is what differentiates a uncivilized society a kangaroo court from a civilized society where there is a rule of law absolutely absolutely and it is important i i mean uh, obviously you are not going to fabricate evidence and i think in nirvaya case is a good example of how not to defend your clients yes. <laughs> but i think if you are doing a good job of defending somebody who has been accused it shows that you have done the defense well you have done your job and yes. there was no foul play like yes. a capable yes. lawyer defending a accused defending an accused and still he being convicted despite a proper defense being mounted shows that we know that yes uh, our systems are working yes <laughs> you know, if, you don't, if you don't represent that person then there is always there is a doubt that towns of doubt remains that you know was this he was not even defended by a reasonable lawyer or a yes. de- defense was not mounted means that there may have been a foul play and where do you draw the line you never know which case is real which is not and that is why we have a trial to exactly. decide so that that is the basic principle of natural justice all the parties concerned have to be given a fair hearing and listen yeah. and lawyers is, are defending certain cases then justice cannot be done absolutely absolutely great so let's uh, have another question divyansh garg is asking 
instead of spending time in briefing civil cases for freshers is it good to substitute studying ipc code and ncert cases as it gets resolved way fast what's your take uh, this is i think not really in your line of work but still would you like to comment on that uh, yes i would like to uh, i would like to comment in positive that's true actually ncert cases and uh, certain uh, ipc matters they do get resolved immediately and you try you would definitely get some uh, steady income which will flow out of it but uh, as i said uh, there is no point in doing uh, everything and in your initial years just to earn certain uh, amount of money because i specifically feel that uh, in the initial years money is not as important as your experience and your expertise that you try to gauge and build because uh, i i'll give you my uh, personal experience as well as what i have uh, lived by mm, all the five years that i have mentioned uh, that i worked in bombay that was not a penny that i had earned out of it i even used to have my my senior uh, mr satish manish in the used to even uh, for to 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 at certain levels even force me to uh, bill my clients but i had that philosophy that i had uh, when i had gone there i had to just learn from him and to work as much as possible and gauge gain as much experience so that's my personal philosophy at least that uh, that that level if you concentrate on one thing and try to learn as much as possible it will help you later but okay. yes i can understand at times you might have your rents to be paid and then you have to have some certain income then yes ncert matters and uh, certain ipc matters do help you a large number of lawyers who are just starting out there so them this is a real concern how do i survive long enough Yes. in the and stay in the game and not have to quit and go take up something else yes. i think it makes sense for you to do some other things on the side or you know do enough to at least you, you, so that you are still a lawyer and not but uh, but rama but ramanuj i would like to uh, mention few things here if if you go into the histories and lives of uh, one of the biggest names of uh, litigators in india they have just barely scrapped through their life in the initial 5 to 10 years yeah if they were to go on to say that no i at least need a decent living at this stage probably they wouldn't have gained the experience or what the level of uh, command that they have today so it's a personal choice if you are ready to slog it through initially uh, my my own senior i remember he used to he would used to tell us tales how he used to survive in one room uh, house with uh, many others for the first 10 years of his practice and now he's one of the highest grossing uh, lawyers of our country with uh, biggest offices which even corporates can't afford and everything so it's just a matter of choice and the grit that you put in if you are ready to uh, not have uh, in my i just want to say this i i see a lot of people uh, i myself have chosen the the hard path like quit yes. a corporate job and uh, you know start from scratch uh, correct or um, or years uh, taken a very very like just uh, leaving wages literally but you know i i recognize when i see this that because i i'm connected to so many law students and working with them on their career they are under you know in history like even more probably in our time 7 8 years back we found a different situation now they are under tremendous pressure because if you are going into law then there is a high expectation everybody in your family especially people coming from lower income groups and you know middle income you are like you ha- you have to earn money because that expectation right. everybody oh now you are a lawyer now we can you know, finally <laughs> relax kind of situation yes. and there is a expectation that, oh when are you graduating when will you start earning and they are under tremendous pressure correct uh, a large number of people from national law universities Who, or even a lot of private law colleges are there now so thousands and thousands of these law students essentially paying 4 lakh 5 lakh per year Correct. per year for 5 years to study and they have student loans they have uh, you know they have, some of them have mortgaged their family properties or whatever to because you don't get this much loan also true, true. Uh, without security so for a lot of people it's not even possible to uh study law from these hallowed institutions as such correct uh, but yeah i mean when you have done that and you have to like you know pay loan and you have to uh, you know still pay your rent and maybe send some money home i think 
we are we are privileged that i i did not have to pay my parents anything yes that so they didn't expect from me that you know uh, you need to send some money home for your uh, you know family members uh, uh, maybe education or for their uh, i don't know medical expenses i mean people are in those situations and we need to kind of recognize that as i, I agree in fact i would uh... as i had mentioned earlier as well that if it is absolutely necessary there will be people who will facing such situations such things can be done to earn money but i would what i would like to chip in here is that if uh, these people who have put in everything behind being uh, lawyers it is it will be only fair if they become good ones at it and they yeah. have sufficiently uh, good returns out of it so if you want to become a good one at it and have, after having spent so much and put on so much on the line uh, it will be fair for them as well personally if they p- consider the extended period as a period of their law, law school life itself that Absolutely. you just need to learn you need to learn the profession on yes. only then be prepared to like you know scrounge yes exactly good life right in the beginning exactly. Bro, exactly. by all means earn and like you know one thing i recommend and you can tell me if this is this works i suggest that everybody should learn good contract drafting especially if you are going into yes. litigation yes people will not trust you with the liberty and life but yes agree agree 5000 rupees to draft a contract 10000 rupees to draft like a you know a lease absolutely uh, absolutely and thing and it ensures that people you have some connections with some people you start building your network we will trust you for the work you have done and some, those work come back later on with some the same people come and refer work to you correct correct absolutely it's a good way to keep on the mon- keep on money coming in and uh, surviving and uh, as you said network building also helps through such uh, things uh, and contract is something that you can at 2 o'clock in the night for 2 3 hours you can draft on contract <laughs> yes. if you have to so correct, it's correct. manageable it's not like other nclt practice would take some team out of your criminal law practice but drafting contracts will not yes okay so i mean i hope that's a solution for those who are looking for that solution and i hope nobody is in that a bad position to make these kind of choices yes uh, another question we have is similar question should we should i practice criminal matters along with business laws or should i focus only on business laws or criminal laws ideally <laughs> ideally should focus on one thing i think one thing exactly yeah. Sarjana is asking how to deal with false sexual harassment cases against men, especially in the case of lack of evidence. In fact, also in case of false sexual harassment cases against women as well. Okay. Do you have anything to say? See, uh, cases which are false, uh, I'll I'll go by the academic definition of it. That's going to be decided at the end of the investigation or the end of the committee's uh, working. at the start of it uh, if it's false uh, uh, sexual harassment cases are something which do fall under the purview of what what uh, ramanuj was trying to say that you try to create your own evidence or you try to bring about your own evidence so contradictory material can be brought by you on record in such cases which uh, does disprove or at least creates a doubt of on the allegations which are falsely made against you and uh, that many a times is sufficient to get you out of the situation because uh, false cases tend to have some uh, lag of times for example if the incident was has happened allegedly to ha- have happened at say on 5th of a month false cases usually being after thoughts they are lost after a certain uh, time gap so such small small nuances do help you out and uh, trying to have certain additional evidence by your own uh, investigation or your own uh, resources that does help you get you out of the situations of uh, false sexual harassment cases that being a private uh, atmosphere a private uh, workplace uh, it's readily available because there are other people as well who are working there the requirement being at least the institute having at least 10 people uh, out of which at least one is women uh, for them only such uh, law is applicable so obviously there are other people around so making false allegations in a private space is in that uh, easy you will definitely get uh, options to disprove it okay that that is very useful like maybe some people will sleep better with this knowledge uh, we have a question i think is an important question in initial year since it is difficult to go independent 
is it recommended to join fellowship programs or join organizations which work for prisoners or women rights etc to gain more experience akanksha agarwal is asking uh legal aid work would definitely help you be it from the court or be it from uh, private organizations however you need to draw balance and draw you need to draw line uh, wherein you decide where the amount of time you are concentrating on such things because uh, many a times i have observed that uh, the style of cases from such organizations is very type cast so you don't really gauge uh, gain a sufficient amount of uh, experience as well as expertise by uh, just doing these cases day in day out so just for the sake of experiences or keeping some roll of cases going on in your uh, professional life it does help yes but doing it on a day to day manner and uh, limiting yourself to it doesn't really help you grow as a criminal litigator okay so uh, we have one last question tushar varma is asking should we start practicing from district court or high court in the initial years i think this is a question that we have sort of answered yes correct put in a couple of years in the yes. district court is what chimma already advised but uh, i will like to modify this question a little when should you say that you know how to decide whether to stay long term in a district court or should i move to the high court now like how do you make that choice see in criminal law practice uh, uh, somehow uh, okay I'll, i'll rephrase my answer somehow uh, litigation in trial courts is looked down upon in other fields of practice say civil law or say uh, other rent matters or all other things there it's it's looked down upon that you practice in a trial court i practice in a appellate court i practice at the supreme court so that situation according to me doesn't really apply to criminal uh, practice because you will see even someone of the stature of ram jethmalani who probably is the biggest lawyer in india has ever produced from the criminal side even today he'll appear in uh, trials even today he'll go and take cross examinations of people so if you want to become a lawyer criminal lawyer and litigator and you want to remain a criminal litigator probably being a trial court lawyer is going to stick to you for life in addition to that you might be appearing in high courts and supreme courts but your application of your knowledge in trial courts or your actual uh, appearances in trial courts won't be ending because even after endless years once you have the name of being a famed criminal lawyer people are going to expect you to appear for them and get secure them bails in the trial court right. because if some big shot say i'm to yeah in 2g cases all the biggest lawyers appeared in the trial court for criminal law that's what you keep on doing for life if you are a criminal litigator great so but at what point of time do you start doing it when your own clients perhaps go for appeals you start yes to... exactly so if your bail gets rejected in sessions court you can uh, might as well appear in the high court yourself for your client so that's how your practice increases to the appellate courts but giving up on it in the trial courts can't really be a decision at the early stage at least i know all my uh, all the seniors that i have worked with briefed they have worked in trial courts at least for 20 30 years if not for life right great i think we are at the end of the session anyway we are we have overshot our time by 15 minutes because the discussion was so great and we didn't want to stop in the middle with some questions unanswered but now i think it's time to stop and uh, thank you everybody who came and watched uh, and thank you chinmay so much for taking time out of your extremely valuable time and uh, i we hope to have you back again sharing some more insights about career and as well as maybe substantive law in the future yes definitely i would like to spend as much time with fellow students and engage in some fruitful discussions thank you for having me over thank you thank you we have great feedback in the chat also people are saying uh, they really like the discussion and everything so great my pleasure. my pleasure yeah thank you thank you everyone good night and again we hope to see you tomorrow tomorrow uh, at between 4 to 5 we have another very fantastic guest and do join us back and do subscribe to the channel so that uh, you get all the updates and notifications thank you thank Take you care. bye bye